So hopefully we got a chance to meet in person at the conference, but in case we didn't, my name is Lynn Pernill. I live in Westchester County, New York, about an hour north of New York City, surrounded by the Hudson River and lots of pretty mountains. I'm a photographer and videographer specializing mostly in weddings and proposals. And I'm also an educator. I teach mostly about photography and business strategy. And my favorite topic is goal setting, which is what we're gonna be diving into today. We're gonna be talking all about goal setting, specifically how you can take all of those amazing takeaways you just learned from Creative at Heart and how to convert them into goals you'll actually be able to achieve. We're gonna discuss how to prevent post-conference overwhelm, when to say no, curating your goals, prioritizing and delegating, formulating achievable goals, taking action, and forming habits. Before we get started, a few little housekeeping items. At any time, feel free to leave a comment or ask a question using the chat box. <clears throat> to leave a comment, just type it in this box right here. And if you wanna ask a question, just click that plus sign and it'll give you the option to mark it as a question. That just makes it easier to find them. And if you like a question that someone else asked, you can vote on it by clicking this button right here. So how many of you feel like you've got lots of information from the conference? I personally feel like each day of the conference could have been a whole conference in itself. So it's probably safe to assume that your to-do to list is overflowing with ideas right now. I know mine is. And that's totally normal for a conference of this level with these inspiring and talented educators. So just know that you're definitely not alone and it's perfectly normal to feel a bit of post-conference overwhelm. These are a few of the things that I recommend doing before attending a conference to prevent this feeling of overwhelm. If you have an out of office message set up, consider making the return date one to two days later so you have time to unwind and organize all of your thoughts and ideas before feeling pressure to dive right back into your normal work schedule. This may sound a little mean, but consider even fibbing to your friends and family that the conference is longer than it actually is, so no one expects you to be available right away, and you have some time to yourself to decompress and kind of debrief after the conference. Or even better, if you're able to, stay an extra few days at the hotel so you can get started on your goals right away without any distractions. Studies have shown that you're more likely to accomplish a goal if you start taking action on it within the first 48 hours, even if it's just a small step. So try to give yourself some time as soon as possible after the conference to dive into your to-do list. And finally, be sure to bring a notebook or voice recorder or some other way to remember and document all the takeaways you get, which is why each of you got one of these goal setting handbooks on day one. So you could jot down all of your ideas as they popped into your head so you didn't forget anything. The first step to releasing the overwhelm is to brain dump. I'm a huge fan of brain dumping. I know Kat is too. This just means documenting your thoughts in any way necessary. It doesn't have to be neat. It could be in a notebook, on sticky notes, in the margins of your handouts. The goal is just to get the thoughts out of your head and get rid of any mental clutter so you can think clearly and give yourself a blank slate. The next step is to gather all of those ideas into one place. So like I said, when you're brain dumping, your ideas are probably scattered in a bunch of different places. So when you're in a calm state, gather them all back into one place on one piece of paper or one document or however you wanna organize them. Next, you wanna take that sheet and organize it even further by categorizing them. I recommend color coding. So I suggest coming up with a key for each color so you can divvy up your notes into those different categories. So it can be whatever categories you want. Um, you can assign a different color to different employees, maybe a color for yourself, a VA and an intern, or you can divide it by priority level. So highlight things that you wanna do ASAP, monthly, quarterly, or long-term or you can break it up into themes, maybe tasks that are related to your website or client relationship, blog, products, et cetera. Before we move on, I think it's really important to talk about curating, which is being selective about what goals and tasks you even allow onto your to-do list to begin with. We are busy people, our time is valuable, even our mental headspace is very valuable. So don't be afraid to be selective and picky about which goals you even allow onto your plate. I know there can be a lot of phantom pressure to do everything everyone else is doing, especially if you hear that top professionals in the industry are doing something a certain way. It can be tempting to think that you need to be doing it as well, but that's not necessarily true. It's perfectly okay to take some advice with a grain of salt or to just completely ignore it. Not every piece of advice is going to apply to you. For instance, you may be exclusively a service-based business, so information about selling products won't apply to you 
or you might be single or not planning on having children. So certain family related advice may not apply to you. Choose how you interpret advice. It's kind of ironic as creative entrepreneurs, we're so creative when it comes to our products and services, but when it comes to receiving business advice, I feel like we have a tendency to interpret certain tips as requirements, not optional ideas. So try to take advice as inspiration. Use your creativity to amend the advice to fit your business, your life, and your special circumstances. After each breakout session or keynote talk, take some time to decipher what points are relevant and suitable to you and which ones you can politely decline. So now that we've decided what we do want to take, we have to acknowledge that we don't have time for everything. Unfortunately, there are only 24 hours in a day. Most of the time, one of these scenarios is usually true. You can do everything, but you can't do everything at once, or you can do everything, but you can't do everything by yourself. If your limitation is time, the solution is to prioritize. And if your limitation is help, the solution is to delegate. Something that can help you determine how to best tackle each goal is the time management matrix. How it works is you divvy up your goals into these boxes by asking yourself how time sensitive or important it is and how exclusive or important it is. That will help you decide whether you should prioritize and do now, schedule for later, delegate or automate or eliminate. Let's start with this one. The least important and least urgent items are the quickest to get off your plate. You can either automate or find a program or software that can take care of it for you, or you can just completely eliminate it. I know it's hard, I have a hard time with this one, but by eliminating the less important tasks, you can allocate your resources to only your most important and urgent goals. That way you can achieve even greater results than you would have if you spread your resources too thin. This concept is called pruning. It means to reduce the extent of something by removing superfluous or unwanted parts especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. It's a common term in gardening. You might prune the sides of a bush to make it grow taller and fuller. Or if you have a pumpkin patch, you might prune all of the pumpkins except for one on each vine. That way all the water and nutrients go to that one pumpkin. That way you end up with a beautiful, big, healthy pumpkin rather than a bunch of small, scrawny, and healthy pumpkins. If you guys have ever heard of the book, The Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz, that's the analogy he uses in the book. And that's what we wanna do with our goals. We wanna get rid of the ones that aren't necessary so we can dedicate more of our resources to what's actually important to us and our businesses. If you think it's a task that still needs to get done, but it's not necessarily something that's important for you to exclusively do, delegate it. Now, this is a huge topic in itself. I don't wanna to go too far off topic, but I think these are the four most important requirements to successfully delegating. First and foremost, I think you have to be fully ready to outsource. You have to have enough work for them to do once you hire them. And of course, you have to have enough expendable income to afford it. Next, I would take the time to make a clear job description, figure out exactly what kind of work you want them to do so you can find someone that's a great fit for the position. Before you commit to them long term, start with a trial run. Maybe give them a smaller project to see what their work is like before you give them a bigger responsibility. Also be prepared to have to give feedback and train them to work the way you like. It's pretty unlikely you're gonna find someone perfect right away, so be patient and be aware that it's gonna take a little while to train them. Outsourcing may take a bit time and effort up front, but the goal is to save you even more time and effort in the long run. Think of a machine, it takes a long time to build a machine, but once it's built, it runs on autopilot. So the longer you take up front to build a better quality machine, the better quality its output is going to be and the less often you'll need to repair it. So just keep that in mind when deciding to outsource. Now that we've decided which tasks are the most important that only we can do, we have to decide what chronological order they should be done in. Of course, the most important tasks should come first, but also make sure to prioritize any goals that are necessary to move yourself in the direction you wanna go or possibly impact or affect future goals. So for instance, if one of your goals is to make a new website, first you have to write the copy, decide on the photos, so those tasks need to come first. So just make sure you're prioritizing any tasks that are a prerequisite for something else. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish there were more hours in the day or if only I could find more time? I feel like I think that every single day. Well, the crazy thing is you can never find more time, but you can make time by prioritizing. 
So there's this awesome analogy called the jar analogy by Stephen Covey. It shows the sort of phenomenon that happens when you manage your time properly, or in this case, these objects, um, water, sand, pebbles, and rocks. So as I go through this, think of the act of putting these objects into the jar as an analogy for how you write things onto your calendar. First, let's imagine putting the objects into the jar from smallest to largest. So water first, then sand, then pebbles, and then rocks. When you go from smallest to largest, you create these useless gaps so the objects aren't able to fit properly and it overflows. But if you were to put them in from largest to smallest, with the rocks first, and then the pebbles, and then the sand, and then the water, the smaller objects are able to fit around the bigger objects and everything fits perfectly. The objects are the same size and same quantity in both examples, but you're able to fit so much more when you put them in in the correct order. It's really crazy. You can actually try this at home, it works. So think about the jar as an analogy for your time. You have a finite amount of time, or in this example, space, that you have to fit all of your tasks into. The big rocks are an analogy for the more important tasks or values or priorities in your life, and the small rocks are the less important tasks. If you focus on the small tasks first, they can easily monopolize your time and make it impossible for you to fit in what's important. So the moral of this is to focus on your big rocks first. If there's something you wanna prioritize, whether it's a big goal or project or something you really value, like time with your family, put that in your calendar first in pen and squeeze in the less important stuff afterwards. Now comes the fun part, formulating goals. So hopefully by now you've been able to narrow down that big overwhelming brain dump into just three to five major goals that you wanna prioritize and focus on now. You may have heard this acronym before. You want your goals to be SMART, S-M-A-R-T. So you want them to be specific. Be careful not to be too broad. Make sure you're being super specific about what it actually is you want to accomplish. Measurable, it should be a goal that you're able to measure when you reach. Otherwise, you'll never know if you made it to the finish line or not. Attainable, it should be something that you have control over attaining. It should be realistic, something you could reasonably do, not some crazy, wild, outlandish dream. And time-based, it should have a time frame or deadline attached to it. So let's go through some examples. If your goal is get more clients and income, that's pretty general. The word more isn't very specific. A more specific goal would be book five more clients and raise prices by 50%. Your goal may be to be better at self-care. But how will you know at the end of the year or if you accomplished it or not if you don't attach some sort of measurement to it? So a more measurable self-care goal would be get a massage after every double header. So for those of you who aren't wedding photographers, a double header is just what we call having two weddings back to back in one weekend. If your goal is find a boyfriend and get married by 2022, while it's perfectly okay to be striving for that, that's not something you have control over achieving by yourself. So what you could have control over is make a dating profile and go on one date per week. If you're only in your first year of business, it might not be realistic to expect to make six figures that year. A more realistic goal might be make at least 1500 per month. If you're going to make your goal too outlandish or unrealistic, you may already think in your head, there's no way I'm going to reach it, so why even try? So you want to make sure your goal is a reach and something you'd be proud of accomplishing, but not so unrealistic that you don't even try. Does that make sense? It's kind of a fine line. And finally, if you don't attach deadlines, it'll never get done. So if your goal is to finish making a client guide, attach a deadline to it. So finish designing client guide by August 1st and mail out to all clients by September 1st. So now comes the exciting or maybe slightly daunting part, taking action. If any of your goals seem so big, you don't even know where to begin, think of this quote. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> So if any of your goals feel like elephants, break them into smaller bite-sized tasks. So this is how I like to break down my goals into quarterly milestones, weekly checkpoints, and daily tasks. So start by working backwards from your deadline. Divide that time frame into four. What quarterly milestones must be met? And then break those down into weeks. What checkpoints must be met each week? And then convert those into daily tasks. 
That way, each day when you sit down at your computer, you only have to think about that one day and it's not so overwhelming. But before you know it, the goal will be finished. So for instance, let's take that client guide example. Each of the quarters, your goals might be to have the uh, layout designed by October, have all the text written by January, have all the photos picked out by April and mail it out in July. Then maybe break down each of those into the sections of the client guide. So maybe intro, welcome, so on and so forth. And then daily, the first two days, you might work on the rough draft. Wednesday, you make revisions. Thursday, you proofread. And Friday, you make final touches. It's very important to actually physically write down your goals. The act of putting pen to paper or even writing it somewhere digitally helps to make an abstract idea or, oh, what if one day feel more concrete. So put that piece of paper somewhere where you'll see it every day so it's harder to ignore. Every time you see that goal, close your eyes and really envision that goal being accomplished. Think about how it'll feel to have it done and try to engage all of your senses. So for instance, if it's your goal to get a degree or graduate, think about what graduation day is gonna feel like, how proud you'll feel, how loud and cheerful the stage will sound, how silky the gown will feel on your shoulders, how fun it'll feel throwing your cap up. The more concretely you envision it happening, the more real the idea will seem subconsciously and the more likely it is to happen. This awesome concept called manifestation happens. I'm not a very woo-woo person, but I absolutely believe in manifestation. The more times you speak something into the universe, the more it's on your mind, and the more you convince yourself it's going to happen, and the more subconsciously you make it happen. This is also why it's really important to make your goals public. The worst thing you can do is keep a goal to yourself. If there's one thing you take from this class, it's this. Write down your goal and share it as publicly as possible to as many people as possible. Tell your family, friends, loved ones, a mentor, a business bestie, or anyone that can help you along the way, or even more importantly, help keep you accountable and ask you about your progress. Every time you run into them, you know they're gonna ask you how it's going, and that'll subconsciously push you to have some positive news or progress to tell them about. It's also really important to let strangers know about your goals. I definitely encourage you guys to talk about your goals on social media, you never know who might read your post and be in a position to help you. And people love helping people. In fact, if you guys know what your main goal is right now, I want each of you to write it down in the chat box so we can all read it and support you in any way we can or even help you reach it. So go ahead and do that right now. That's why I love that Kat made that sweet dreams lemon wall at the conference. How many of you guys wrote your goal on one of those lemons? If you did, A plus, you are already doing the right things. So before I finish up, let's talk about one last thing, creating habits. Sometimes the hardest part about diving into a goal is just starting. Taking the first steps and forming habits are the most important part about actually accomplishing your goal. Like I mentioned earlier, studies have shown that the first 48 hours are the most crucial in determining whether or not you'll achieve a goal. Once you decide on a goal, it's so important to take at least one tiny action step towards that goal as soon as possible. Otherwise, you train your brain into believing that you're not serious about it, it's not that important, and you're just not gonna try to get it done. Think of it this way. If a guy asks you on a date, and you wait for him for hours and hours, and he doesn't show up, and he ends up standing you up, you're probably not gonna trust him or wanna go on another date with him, right? Well, the same thing happens within your own brain. If you set a goal and then don't act on it, you train your brain not to trust you, you train yourself that you're not reliable, and you're just not serious about your goals. So you can prevent that by taking just one step. So going back to that client guide example, um, your first tiny step could just be opening InDesign, making a file, naming it, and saving it. It's definitely not too hard, it just gets the ball rolling. The next way to ensure that you work on a certain task is to set the scene ahead of time. Make it easy for yourself to get started. So if your goal is to lose weight, maybe ahead of time, hide all of your unhealthy snacks, put some apples on the counter readily available for you, or even better, cut them up, put them in the fridge. Basically, you just want to prep your surroundings so it doesn't take any extra motivation, willpower, or conscious effort to take the first step. Another example, if you're a photographer and you're not very diligent about editing, the night before, clear your desk of any distractions, close any distracting tabs or files, Open Lightroom to the first file you need to edit, and then close your laptop flap and go to sleep. 
That way, when you wake up the next morning, when you go to start working, you've already created the easiest environment for you to start editing. The next tip is to anchor. You wanna use habits you've already established and are already good at to trigger new ones. When I was a kid, I was a typical lazy kid around bedtime and didn't wanna brush my teeth, but the second I got contacts, I was the best at brushing my teeth. I really didn't wanna wear glasses, I wanted contacts, but my eye doctor and my parents told me how bad it was to fall asleep in them, and there was this big scary poster in the eye doctor office of an eye that had gotten infected because someone didn't take them out. So I was very diligent about taking them out, and then once I was already in the bathroom by the sink, it was easy to just also brush my teeth. So I used the easy habit, taking out my contacts, to trigger the second habit, brushing my teeth. And finally, the most important one, reward yourself. Celebrate your wins no matter how small they are. For example, I am really motivated by crossing things off my to-do list. So if I do something that I wasn't planning on doing that day, I'll just write it onto my list anyway so I get the satisfaction of crossing it off. Or if your spouse, husband, or boyfriend asks you how your day was, but you only got a few little things done, go ahead and list all of those things for him, no matter how small. Don't make them seem insignificant. If we believe that the small tasks are insignificant, we won't have any motivation to do them. And in the end, the big things will only happen if we do all the small things. So on that note, happy goal setting. I'm going to exit full screen in a few seconds so I can read the chat box, but in the meantime, feel free to write any questions you have, make sure to mark them. If you think of something later, go ahead and DM me. That's my Instagram handle, and that's my photography website and education website.